welcome back everybody welcome to my youtube channel this is tom christie in the carving shop the decoy carving shop and we're working on a project to carve a drake gunning widgeon this is kind of in a low head position in the previous videos if you haven't seen those we started from scratch and bandsawed the bird out we got the head shaped the body shaped in this session we're going to split the body, hollow it out to make this decoy as light as possible. That will help with flotation. Then we'll reassemble the pieces, mount the head, and I've got to develop a keel for this bird. So we'll do that hopefully in this session as well and get the bird ready to seal up. Then in the next session we should be ready to test float the decoy and get it ready to prime and paint. And I am going to take this series through painting Sometimes I stop at carving on a gunning decoy like this. I want to uh, take it through the carving process, but then we'll take step by step through the painting process and put a relatively simple gunning style paint job on this bird. If you're valuing the channel and uh, getting enjoyment out of it, please hit the subscribe button. I want to thank all of you that have done that. I appreciate it very much. It doesn't cost anything, but it does help me out and it helps me continue to build this channel. So let's get going on this bird. Okay, I want to carefully split the decoy. And on this particular decoy, I'm going to go with a kind of a bottom board. So we'll be hollowing out the top half of the decoy and leaving the bottom intact. And uh, I've got it set up. I always use a block. It gives me nice stability and kind of squeeze as we go through the uh, bandsaw to keep your hands away from the blade. And just don't press it too hard. Take your time and we'll get this thing split. Now we can work on hollowing the top half. All right, I want to leave about a half an inch of wood to maintain strength in the decoy, but get as much weight out of it as possible by hollowing this half. And we're going to do that on the drill press with a Forstner bit. This is where this top piece of scrap comes in handy. We cut that off of the block when we bandsawed the original decoy shape out. And it makes a nice nesting fixture to keep everything square and flat as we hollow out the decoy. All right, I've got the drill press set up. I've got a one inch Forstner bit in there and I'm going to start by going around the perimeter. The danger of course is uh, punching through some of these carved areas so we've got to be very careful about not doing that. It happens every once in a while but I've gotten better at it. So I'm going to go around the perimeter here and just show you a short piece of that and then we'll move to the larger Forstner bit as we go deeper. I'm just gauging how deep I can go, kind of eyeballing from the side. I can't go very deep right there. That's where the side pocket carving is. So pretty shallow on this first pass on the perimeter. And then we can go deeper as we go further into the middle of the decoy. 
starting on the second pass and I can go it a little deeper on this pass. Probably sticking my head in the way every time. Let me check that out. All right, I had to give the cameraman a talking to. That's me. I think we've got a better angle going on now. keep going on this and then we'll uh, get out the larger bit and kind of clean things up when I get this dug out. Once you have a first pass you can kind of use your fingers as a pinch gauge to get a feel for areas that are a little thick. I'm still a little thick down in here so I can keep going a little bit deeper in that area. inch and a half Forstner bit and uh, I'm going to use that to clean up some of these steps and uh, further hollow it out. And just a, a safety note here, those of you that are experienced woodworkers know you've got to keep your hands away from that bit so always stay away so that if uh, these Forstners can have a tendency to grab wood every once in a while and move things around. Keep your hands away from that bit. It's nasty. how it grabs a little bit especially when you hit those steps so again you want to be far away from the bed. so I'll get this cleaned out and then we'll take a look at it just a quick look at that after the inch and a half Forstner bit. So it's taking a lot of weight out of the upper shell. And now we can put the halves together again. In this low head tuck position, I don't have to worry about too much about the strength of the head and its attachment to the body because there's going to be a, a lot of glue joint there. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to put a hole in here. And uh, we'll use a, a screw with a fender washer from the opposite side. And now I know where to put it in and drive that home when we glue the head on. And that'll really uh, make sure there's no strength issues with the head and body attachment. So in preparation for attaching the head before we put the body halves together, I went ahead and drill or put the screw in position so it protrudes a little bit and then I can get my head positioned correctly and mark the location of that on the head. Now I'll just drill a little hole there uh, to prepare for driving that screw home after gluing. All right I've got my DevCon uh, five minute epoxy mixed up here gonna paint that liberally in the pocket here for the head. Make sure I have plenty of glue in contact with the head and the body. So 
same thing for the head. Got to work pretty quickly with the five minute epoxy. That fits nice in the pocket. And then we'll go ahead and screw this in. Make sure we're aligned from the front. It looks good. That head's not going anywhere. I've marked out where these white patches are on the sides and just uh, the final body detail I'm going in with this little cylindrical ruby bit and just giving myself a little bit of guideline. Just along the top edge, and just enough, just enough to know exactly where that paint should go when we get to the painting part, and it does cast a little bit of a shadow. I'll sand that. In preparation for putting the body halves together, I've driven some wire brads in four spots and then snipped off the heads, so they just become little locating pegs and just as a note you don't want to drive those too deep so that when you press the halves together you press them through the, the bottom by accident and I'm going to use those as locating pins I've put some registration marks on the body parts when they were together to help me get a get it lined up and then I want to press it in place in these little Locating pins will help during the gluing process keep things from sliding around where we don't want them to go. So I'm just pressing the halves together, making sure I'm on my registration marks. That looks pretty good. There's always a, a little bit of a mismatch because of the kerf, the, the width of the blade um, when you bandsaw it in half. Not bad. So now I can take those apart. I'm going to make the keel out of oak. And this is one inch wide oak. And I've marked where I want to put my keel screws along with uh, an anchor line attachment hole. So I'll get those drilled with a quarter inch drill. The reason I'm doing this work now is uh, this is a relatively thin bottom board and it's made out of Tupelo so it's pretty soft. So I want to locate some hardwood uh, pieces inside that the keel screws will drive through so that this attachment of the keel is very solid and is not going to have any potential to leak. going to use a router to round the edges and the uh, anchor line hole and to countersink the uh, keel screws. I'll do that all the way around here, here, here. I'd like to have a little bevel on the edge of my keels because they tend to take some punishment and a sharp edge is much more susceptible to a, to a ding like that that might break through the, uh, 
whatever you use to seal up the keel. Okay, I've got those rounded off and these countersunk, so those will be nice and flush. And now I'll just sand the keel lightly. All right, I'm gonna center the keel because uh, a lot of people wait until floating and then locate the keel to help balance the decoy. I just like my keels in the center of the decoy thing. So I'm gonna mark those locations with an awl. And that way I can drill through a pilot hole and I'll know where to put those hardwood inserts on the back side. Now I'm just taking some two-part epoxy and uh, putting that on these half-inch oak blocks. And then I'm just going to locate those right over these pilot holes. So that I know they're in good position when I drive the keel screws home from the opposite side. So I'll let those cure and then we can put our halves together. I do like to use two-part epoxy to seal up the anchor line hole, the keel screw holes in the end grain of the uh, wood. That'll make it a lot easier to finish and make sure that that end grain is nice and durable and doesn't soak up water. All right, while we're waiting for things to dry, I'm gonna use some uh, car groom body filler. You can use Bondo, you can use plastic wood, whatever you prefer. Uh, to fill in the neck joint. This stuff sets up really quick, so I need to move quickly, especially with as much hardener as I put in to begin with. So I'm just gonna use a little piece of uh, flexible plastic and push this material into the neck joint. Make sure it's down in there and covering the gaps. And I'm gonna quickly go around the, I'll try to stay in camera here. Fill in any gaps we have. There's not many gaps because of the tight fit we got on the inserting the head. Definitely a gap up front under the bill where it's hard to get to, of course. Get material loaded in there and then smoothed out. It's probably hard to see, but I've got to work really quickly here, as I mentioned. And I'll show you when I'm done what it looks like. Just trying to make sure I have enough material in there that I can take some material off and blend things out. That's one thing I like about the body filler is it blends really nicely uh, into the surrounding wood to when you sand it so that the neck joint is not visible. So that looks pretty good. Got one gap left over here, right there. Again, I'm gonna overdo it and put a little more material than I need. I can always grind material out. I do want this to go under a little bit, cast a little bit of a shadow from above. All right, I'll finish that up and then come back. Let's give you a good, quick look at that neck joint. So as 
think I've got material in all the way around. And this sets up really fast and is workable very quickly. That's another thing I like about it. All right, final step for today's session. Got my two-part DEFCON five-minute epoxy mixed up. Kind of giving myself a target line here to spread glue on both halves. These little locating pegs, I think, also help strengthen the joint. It'll work quickly here because it'll set up fast. And we want to get the halves together before that begins to happen. Do the same thing here. sure both surfaces are nice and wet so there are no dry gaps along this seam. Okay that looks good. I'm going to line up my registration marks. Oops there's a dry gap right there that I was just talking about. I don't want that. I'd rather have a little too much rather than too little use my registration marks and get located and go ahead and push the two halves together then I like to use electrician's tape to pull the two halves together put some pressure on the glue joint. This low head slung back doesn't give me much room to work here. Then I'm just using a piece of paper towel and going around the glue joint, wiping off the amount that's squeezing out so that I don't have to deal with that later. And I wanna put a little additional clamping pressure on that joint and this is a bucket of lead weights and that'll put some nice downward pressure on the glue joint while it's set. All right everybody we'll call that a wrap on session three of carving the Drake Widgeon hunting decoy. We got the bird hollowed out and put back together the neck joint bondoed or filled and then in the next session we'll get that smoothed out We'll get this joint smoothed out. We've got the keel made. We'll get that sealed up and uh, we should be able to assemble it, float the decoy in, in the next session and get ready for painting. Until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Have fun out there. Good carving to you.